everyone! Today I'm going to show you how to build a cluster out of Raspberry Pis. And then I'll also show you how to use a little bit of Python code to control and manage that cluster. But first, let's get started on the hardware. To hold everything together, I'm going to be using one of these little Raspberry Pi kits. Now these guys sent me this one for free, but there's a link in the description in case you wanted to get one for yourself. But I've never put one of these things together, so let's see how this goes. I do like that it comes with a little pair of tweezers because kits like these tend to have small parts. And this is really nice. All of the parts come in this little divider and uh, definitely going to be using this little divider for electronic components and stuff after I build this kit. So here are the actual acrylic dividers, the structure of the thing. So let's see how to put it together. That's pretty neat looking. These are all metal standoffs too, which is better than the nylon ones I was using in one of the last videos. Pretty sturdy. There we go. For the next step, we'll need to install Raspbian on each of the Raspberry Pis. And to do that, you'll need four micro SD cards. These are just 16 gigabyte micro SD. Then you'll need to go to the, Ras the Raspbian website, or the raspberrypi.org site, uh, go to the downloads page, and then grab Raspbian Lite. And we're using Raspbian Lite because we're not going to have a monitor attached to each one of these, so there's no point in having all the GUI stuff installed. So I've already got this downloaded, and I've extracted the zip file, which gives you this .img image file. So now you need to flash that image onto one of the SD cards. And to do that, a really easy way is to just use this program called Etcher. So you download Etcher, and I've already got that done. And here's what Etcher looks like. So the first thing you do is select that .image file for the image. And then it asks you to select a drive. Now, Etcher is pretty smart, so when you take an SD card and you pop it into your system, Etcher will detect that right away and set that as the drive to install on. So that part's done. Then you just hit flash, and you have to type in your password. Uh, so, you know, close your eyes. Okay. And then it starts flashing. This does take a while, so now we wait.
Okay, so once it's done flashing, it goes into this validation step. Uh, and at this point, it's just basically making sure that it actually wrote the right image to the disk and that there was no corruption or anything. So this takes just a little bit longer. And now it's complete. So then you can just go to flash another, take that previous SD card out. I'm gonna put it in one of the pies just so I don't mix these up. And then do this three more times. Once we have Raspbian installed on each SD card, we need to enable SSH so we can access them from the command line without having to plug a keyboard and a monitor and stuff into them. So take each SD card out one by one and put it back into my computer. And then in the boot partition, just create a new file named SSH. And make sure it doesn't have any file extension or anything like that. It's just a file named SSH. And you don't put anything in it. Just the file. And that's it. That'll configure Raspbian to enable SSH when it first boots. So do that for all four SD cards. At this point, everything's ready to assemble. So take those SD cards, put them back into the pies, there we go. And now I have a little eight port uh, switch here that they're all going to be connected to with Ethernet patch cables. You can configure them all to use Wi-Fi, but I don't like to have that many Wi-Fi devices on my network at any time. I have a lot of Raspberry Pis. <laughs> so you plug each one into your your little network switch. And now I've got this little power hub. This is actually a charger hub. What you don't want, you don't want a USB hub that extends the USB port from your computer. You want something that's strictly built to power things. And this little device does exactly that. Uh, and then I just have some little USB to micro USB jumper cables. And these, of course, just go into the little micro USB power slot. You don't have to use color coded cables like this, but be aware that it won't look nearly as cool. All right, so now everything is plugged in, and all I have to do is hit this little power switch here. And you can see all the Raspberry Pi LEDs lighting up. You can also see the lights on this network switch lighting up. See how they're all active now. So now they're all connected to my network. I guess I should have mentioned that the switch itself is also plugged into my router. Uh, you don't have to use an actual router. You can configure one of these Raspberry Pis to work as a router and do a little isolated local network just with the Raspberry Pis and anything you plug into here. But I've got this plugged into a, a larger portion of my network through another router using this cable here. 
Okay, so now I've got everything connected to my network, but in order to SSH into them, I'll need to know each of their IP addresses. To do that, I'm going to use an IP scanner. In this case, I'm using Angry IP Scanner. Uh, there are plenty of alternatives out there. So I'm just going to set the IP range to scan. I know that the devices are going to be connected in this range, but that's going to differ based on your router. So now I'll just hit scan, and then it should start finding devices in that range. Basically, it's just trying each one of those IP addresses in that range and like knocking on it with a little ping and taking a list of everything that responds. And here are all the responses. Now, I only care about these Raspberry Pi. host names. I'm going to sort by that. And so it gives me these IP addresses. And I can directly use SSH and connect to each IP address, but it would be easier to manage them all if we use something like Fabric. So Fabric is going to allow me to send these remote control commands to each one of them. Basically, it gives me an SSH connection to all of them in batch instead of having to do it one by one. So you're going to want to install Fabric. And this is a Python package. So pip is the command that you use to install Python packages. Now, it's already installed on my system, so that's good. To use Fabric, you create a file named fabfile.py. I've got a basic setup here that gives me the ability to send a generic command to all of the, the Python or the Raspberry Pi devices. But first I have to fill in these hosts. So each one of them, pi is going to be the username, and then I just need the IP address. So 192.168.1.64 is the first one. I'm going to go ahead and copy these through since they're all so similar. And then 0.66 is the next one, 0.67 is the next one, and then this one's all the way down here at 9.4. Now, the default password is Raspberry. We're going to change that here in a bit. So you definitely don't want to leave your Raspberry Pis all with the default Pi username and Raspberry password because then anyone can access your device if they're on your network. That's no good. Okay, to use this fab file, I'm going to open up a terminal and then type fab cmd because we're using this cmd task. And it takes an argument, which is going to be a command that gets sent as a sudo command to each host. So the command I want to send is going to be to echo pi colon top secret piped into the change password command in the terminal. So if I execute this, it's going to run on each host. And you're going to see a little printout of the log of events of what just happened. So each host is going to be executing this command. It's going to show you what the actual command was executed. You know that it's executed as sudo. Uh, each host complains at first that, you know, this is a security risk. You're connecting with the username pi and uh, the default password, so you don't want to do that. And that's exactly why we're changing it, because that's a bad idea. So now they should all be changed. Um, I can try to execute that again, I guess, just to make sure that it doesn't allow it. 
yeah, the connection is refused because we still have Raspberry as the password here. And that's good. That's exactly what we want. So now I can change the password here. Hopefully I can remember it. Yeah, to be top secret. So now let's issue another command. Um, this is one you're generally going to want to do which is going to be to do an apt update, right? So we want to install all the, the updates. And it's working, so that means that the password was changed and now we're able to connect using that new password. So I'm just going to go ahead and update all the packages real quick. Okay, so apt is all updated. Um, we'll go ahead and actually upgrade all of the packages to do the actual install. I'm going to pass this Y flag to automatically say yes to the the installations. So that's going to go ahead and actually update all of the packages that have updates available. Cool. And then once that's done, if you've ever installed Raspbian on a Raspberry Pi, you know that one of the first steps is to expand the file system. Normally that's done through the, the command line interface for the Raspi config program. We're going to do that over SSH without having to do the little command line GUI aspect of it. And there's a pretty easy way to do that. So the command we're sending is raspy config, but then we're passing it this flag to say expand root fs. So we want it to expand the root file system, and we're going to send this off to each one of the hosts. And that looks good. So now we can just reboot all of them. So I'll go ahead and send off reboot now. And if you notice, all of the indicator lights on the network went off. And now they're all coming back online. And there we go, Raspberry Pi cluster. With just a little bit of Python code, you can add new commands to that fab file. And that makes it really easy to do things like deploying web servers, obviously to keep them updated, to change configuration, start and stop services and stuff. Uh, Fabric is a really useful library, especially for things like this. Uh, I wanted to give a shout out to the Pyrax people. Thanks for sending me this awesome little rack kit. It's definitely neat. Uh, there's a link in the description if you wanted to pick one up for yourself, and uh, yeah, that's it. Hope you enjoyed this video.